You know, life is interesting. One moment you're buying a book that's required for a class, and the next you're sitting down with incredible people, hearing their stories and their experiences. And they're all centered around their father, Henry A. Clausen, that little boy right there in the photograph. This is his story. An artist model, a professional wrestler, a clown, a film extra and stuntman, a writer, an intellectual, and a rare book dealer and antiquarian. Ladies and gentlemen, the Danish American wonder. Oa Henry Christian Kierkeiner Clausen was born April 4th, 1902 in Brooklyn, New York. He had been a sickly child and his parents, Ellen and Henry, were very concerned about his health. And fearing that they may lose Henry, they traveled across the Atlantic via the SS Norge to visit Henry's grandmother in Denmark, where she was able to nurse Henry back to good health. The 1910 U.S. Census shows the Clausen family was still living in Brooklyn, New York, but Henry Clausen, Henry Clausen's father, Johannes Clausen, was an orchestra conductor and he traveled with his orchestra and took his wife and son with him. And so Henry Clausen ended up going to hundreds of concert performances with his parents. He always loved the outdoors. He always loved to hike and walk and he made friends easily. And so he was um, a lifeguard. He had a very good build and he he got his muscles honestly, is what Thomas Art Benton used to tell him. That's why he liked his, his physique. And that's one of the reasons why my dad was so successful in Benton's art classes. Today, he was listed as a teacher of mural painting as well. Nonetheless, figure drawing always remained the core of Benton's classes at the League. Ivy Starr, who studied with Benton in 1933, recalls that one of the chief attractions of his classes was that he always had the best model at the league, probably Henry Clausen, who later followed Benton to Kansas City. And on the road, he stayed traveling from place to place, working as a professional wrestler, as well as an artist model. In 1923, a trip to California led him to meet Staten McDonald Wright at the Southern California Art Students League. Additionally, after modeling for Japanese artist Hideo Date, they formed a friendship that would last a lifetime. Because not only did they work together and create art, but also because Henry was a crucial player in keeping Hideo's artwork safe following the war. Henry was working as a successful artist model as well as wrestling all over the country. From the book Tom and Jack by Henry Adams, The Intertwined Lives of Thomas Hart Benton, and Jackson Pollock is this quote. The muscular Hank Clausen, the well-read son of a Danish symphony conductor who had compensated for a sickly childhood by taking the Charles Atlas bodybuilding course and who added to his income as a professional wrestler by moonlighting as an artist model. Henry could also be seen working as an extra on film sets including The Thief of Baghdad, starring Douglas Fairbanks Sr., as well as with actor Milton Sills. And here is a cast photo where Henry can be seen standing behind Milton, who is centered there. Henry's athleticism allowed him the opportunity to do stunts, fight choreography, and to work on film sets as an extra. 
He can also be seen in The Merry Widow. And he also trained with actor Elmo Lincoln for many of his roles. Most famously, Henry trained with Harry Houdini. They trained at Bothner's Gym in New York City. In 1930 and 31, Henry Clausen was hired by Tom Benton to pose for a large mural he was working on for a private party entitled America Today. And after a number of decades, it ended up and is still on display today at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And Henry is prominently figured in a number of the panels. In 1935, he also posed for his friend William Yarrow, who was commissioned by Princeton University to do a number of panels for their gymnasium. And in every panel are sports figures doing various activities, and Henry is prominently figured in almost every single one of those panels as a runner, a gymnast, football player, tennis player, golfer, and what have you. Mid-1930s, Henry traveled to Kansas City to pose for Tom Benton, who was working on a mural for the Missouri State Capitol. Benton feverishly painted for six months, and Henry is prominently figured in a number of poses in this mural that is still treasured today by the citizens of Missouri. Henry's physique was instrumental for many artists for many years. In 1937, while working for the Works Progress Administration, Henry posed for what is now one of the most famous freestanding tile murals on the west coast of the United States in Long Beach, California, and it's entitled The Long Beach Recreations. And though Henry was very occupied working as an artist model and traveling throughout the country, that did not slow down his professional wrestling career. And most importantly, he was recognized as an intellectual and an incredibly talented man. And in 1941, Henry married his sweetheart, Elizabeth Susan Chaloner. And in 1946, he received a letter from his old friend, Charlie Bennell, an artist whom he'd known for years, who lived in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And he had news for Henry. There was a bookstore for sale for $500. He called his uncle, Owen Nielsen, borrowed the money. And a couple of months later, he and his family were on their way to Colorado Springs. After arriving in Colorado Springs, Henry and Betty contacted their old friend Archie Music, who set them up in a small shack at the base of the Garden of the Gods on Studio Place. And from there, the family grew and grew and grew and made memories that are still lasting today. Some of my fondest memories were sitting in the books shop and um, sometimes dad would just tell me I could have the day off from school so I could come and I could sit in the bookshop. And that was fine with me because I love to read. Remember dad teaching us how to turn the pages of a book? Yes. How not to turn the pages? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was it? He had, he had beeswax and um, yeah, lanolin. 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 They cooked, cooked up on the stove and he had a paintbrush and he'd paint the leather. And then yeah. he'd wrap the book in wax paper. It was a leather, like a leather bound book. Wrap it in wax paper with 
rubber bands that would sit at night and mm -hmm. we didn't dare touch those because yeah. those are books that were being preserved or made better. Right. I always, I always loved to read as a kid, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and you know, hung around the bookstore, helped my dad move books, and I remember moving from location to location a few times. And I didn't like carrying the books that much, but uh, <laughs> but there was always something interesting to read. And And he always insisted on buying a Cadillac. And we had a garage this wide and the Cadillac was this wide. <laughs> right. and he would take out the side of the, the side garage. The side of the garage you were going. how he got out of the car. I know how he got out of the car. That guy just did. Yeah. Because, yeah. It didn't, yeah. He didn't hurt the car much, but you should have seen the inside of that garage. Oh, the gosh. sheet rock and the plaster was, was all just crumbling. everywhere. <laughs> And you could always tell where dad was because he whistled. Remember, he constantly whistling. Oh, whistle that once. whistle was yes. just never ending. Oh, so yeah. that was a great memory, <laughs> him whistling. Well, Dad taught us some Danish songs. Did you guys? You guys learned yeah. them, didn't you? Sit so, uh, yeah. around um, the piano. The mom would play piano. Mom played the piano, mm -hmm. and then I remember sing. Dad singing this falsetto. Yeah. Wah, yeah. Wah. yeah. And taught us Danish Christmas songs. Yeah. I remember Dad yeah. used to hide money in books. Oh yeah, like fifty dollar yeah. bills and yeah, he'd hide them in oh, different dear. books. Oh dear, that mm, the lucky person that bought that book. Oh, I hate, guess. but <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah. In nineteen seventy one, Henry Clausen celebrated twenty five years in the book business, selling old, rare, out of print. And antiquarian books, and a scrapbook was made for him by his friends Carl and Nancy Wall to celebrate the six different locations he'd had in downtown Colorado Springs. After 25 years in the book business, Henry reflected back on his career as an artist model in an article about Stanton McDonald Wright in the American Art Review, in which he also recalled his friendship with Archie Music, his old friend from the 1920s, whom he'd hiked with on Pikes Peak. In an interview with Mary Jane Rust, Henry talks about meeting Archie for the first time. Uh, Mr. Clausen, you told me before we went on the air an interesting uh, how you met Archie. I think that's kind of interesting. I think maybe our people would like to hear that story. Well, I, I would have to put it this way. I met him before I saw him. <laughs> I had just gotten up the manner to incline, and this was back in tw 1926. All right. And started off in the woods, and oh, about a half hour later, I heard a lot of sounds. And uh, I recognized him. Well, something, something was from La Traviata and something from Aida. Anyway, it was a robust voice, and he was practically almost on pitch most of the time. <laughs> so I headed his way, and uh, in fact, I, yes, and while I was heading his way, I started singing with him, too. That, that was oh, compounding the felony. I think my father would like to be remembered as a bookseller with integrity and honesty and genuine knowledge of old, rare, and out-of-print books. He loved books to his core, and he wanted to make sure that the right books went to the right people. He liked to provide the best possible value in rare and used and out-of-print books. Yeah, he... He he was kind of amused and maybe annoyed by people who would bring out. I've got this really old book, you know, it was nineteen maybe fifty three or something. 
<laughs> From Larry McMurtry's book, Walter Benjamin at the Dairy Queen, comes the following quote. I would soon go on to buy many books worse in every respect than Rogue Harry's. In June of that same year, while on a senior trip, I first stepped into old Mr. Clausen's bookshop in Colorado Springs, a shop I was to revisit often for the next 25 years. On this first visit, I bought a ratty, but to me resplendent issue of Byron. Henry Clausen, ex-wrestler, seller of books used and rare. He commands from shop stern a grizzled, aging Viking, slim, compact, eyes that probe each subject with Nordic care. He repastes the binding, careless fools, no salesman, a go-between for readers and their chosen lands. He sweeps an occult lady with baleful eye as he counts change from a cigar box register. He could go top deck with yarns to drag applause from Beowulf himself. How he wrestled monsters for years. Merduk, the Trenton killer, Sin Fang Yu, the Chinese torturer. Or he could brag out of style about his blonde assault, their clan of Norsemen. But no, he keeps a lonely helm, engrossed to chart mind's course in drift through currents and tides of books. A sidelong glance once in a while at crowds constant as waves on endless journeys out there. There's no denying that Henry A. Clausen was an influential individual within the Pikes Peak region. He lived a tremendously adventurous life and was a multi-talented artist and entertainer. Throughout his life, he collaborated with world-renowned artist and left his mark within art and music and film and sports such as wrestling and he holds a place within the hearts of many individuals and not just those in Colorado Springs. He was quoted for saying old books like old friends wear well. The legacy of Henry A. Clausen still lives on throughout his children, who I had the pleasure of speaking with and reminiscing with. Currently, Clausen's books is being run by Doug Clausen, one of Henry's sons. The bookstore is still thriving and can be found now online. And thanks to a book that I needed, that I purchased at Clausen Books, I now know of the incredible and talented Danish-American wonder. <laughs>